Hello, it's Dr. Lee here. I'm standing here in front of the house of Professor and Dr. Egash Monish. He's the only neurosurgeon who's ever received the Nobel Prize that I'm aware of. And um, I had a chance to come to Lisbon. I had a chance to come to Portugal. And this is his summer home. His house in Lisbon is no longer uh, available or uh, it can be visited, but all of his uh, belongings and things are stored here, such as his Nobel Prize from uh, Sweden. More interestingly, and what he won the Nobel Prize for was frontal leucotomy. Now we use the word frontal lobotomy when we think about this problem, but Dr. Munish came up with this procedure to treat psychiatric diseases. Now we gotta go back in time. <laughs> Egers Munich was born in Portugal. He was not from Lisbon, but actually closer to Porto, which is about three hours away. He went to the University of Coimbra and became a medical doctor. He became attracted to neurology, and at that time, neurology and psychiatry are very closely interlinked. And so he studied under some famous people, including Babinski from the Babinski Reflex when he went to France. He was also very involved in politics. And actually, at one point, he became arrested because of his support for one political ideal. He's a very fascinating individual. This is his summer home. When you visit the house, you'll really appreciate how wealthy he had become with his practice and his politics and his publications. He's a very prolific author. He published over 300 papers. So one thing I want to clarify, back then, neurosurgery was a very, very nascent field. Surgeons, general surgeons would do neurosurgery. And so... Even though Egesh Munish studied in neurology and psychiatry and he had patients and mostly counseled them and tried different ways to manage their neurologic and psychiatric problems, he really in many ways was still a neurosurgeon because he pioneered procedures to intervene in the brain. He did this in angiography and he did this in surgery. The work he did in diagnostic angiography started when he was in his 50s. Actually, his first publication was in 1931. And the prefrontal leucotomy started several years after that. So he really delved into procedural parts of surgery and neurosurgery when he was in his 50s. And at that time, actually, he was suffering from significant gout and his hands couldn't do the work. So he really relied on his assistant, Professor Lima. Egash Moniz. Now, Professor Moniz, he really made his fame in two ways. Number one, he developed cerebral angiography. By injecting sodium iodide, a dye, into the vessels, he was able to diagnose things. Now, you got to go back in time. This was a time when the only ways to visualize the brain or intrinsic properties or what's going on in the brain was to use pneumoencephalography. They would do a lumbar puncture, inject air, and it was super painful. And based on the pattern of where the air went in the ventricle, it would determine where they would get some insight into what's going on in the brain. But what Dr. Munish was able to do, he was able to inject a dye that outlined the vessels. And with that, you can start to see tumors, you can start to see other processes. So this was an amazing invention. But more interestingly, and what he won the Nobel Prize for was frontal leucotomy. Now we use the word frontal lobotomy when we think about this problem, but Dr. Munish came up with this procedure to treat psychiatric diseases. Now, we got to go back in time. If you go back in time, there were no drugs to treat these patients. These patients who were mentally infirm, insane, they were placed in these sanatoriums and there was no options for these patients. So what could we do? There were no drugs at the time. The Haldols and the Risperdals and the drugs, the dopaminergic agents were not available yet. So what he invented was a procedure you do an electroconvulsive therapy, and then you put the patient to sleep. Once they're asleep, he drilled a hole, and then using a leucotome, which is literally a piece of metal, he would shear the white matter fibers of the frontal lobe. And in this way, by doing it on both sides, he was able to do a frontal lobotomy, which resulted in incredible results at that time. Now, it seems incredibly crude today, but at that time, that was Genius. I mean, it was such genius that he won the Nobel Prize in the 1940s. And that was not that long ago. That was only 80 years ago. He was born in the 18, late 1800s and won a Nobel Prize in the 1940s for a procedure that we no longer do today. 
So it's an incredible story, and I urge every neurosurgeon, every radiologist, you have to come visit um, this place. The, this is not his actual home. This was his summer home. He had a home in Lisbon and an office in Lisbon. <laughs> When you do psychosurgery, you have to be careful. Your patients are not mentally firm. And anybody who's delving into the treatment of psychiatric patients always has to be very cautious because even Egos Moniz, his patient tried to assassinate him and shoot him with a gun. He was sitting in his office and they have a replica of his office here. And this unfortunate individual came in and tried to shoot him. Fortunately, he survived, but actually had he died, he would not have been able to win the Nobel because this was before he won the Nobel Prize. But um, obviously anyone starting psychosurgery, and I have colleagues um, who are now starting this field of psychosurgery, and that is obviously a very, very uh, novel and interesting field, but of course not one that I delve into. So I'm back now in Philadelphia. And the question is, what did I learn from this wonderful trip to Portugal? I visited the birthplace of cerebral angiography, the birthplace of frontal lobotomy or psychosurgery. So I take away two things. Number one, Egos Moniz had a second career. Even before or intertwined with medicine, he was doing politics. He was the ambassador to Spain. He was really involved in the politics of his day, and that, uh, that actually surprised me. A second thing I took away from this is that with such a fertile mind and creative uh, and aggressive personality, he was able to start innovation into his 50s. So he developed cerebral angiography and experimented with different dyes and techniques late into his 50s. And cerebral angiography started at that time. He actually couldn't do the procedures as well as his assistant, Lima. Um, he, sometimes he needed a carotid cut down to get to the uh, carotid artery in order to do the injections for those angiograms. And then he then listened to a talk many years later from a Yale neuroscientist who was doing work on the brains of monkeys and was doing a topectomy or just cutting small portions of the frontal lobe and slicing through the cortex, the neocortical layers. And by doing this, he was able to change the psychiatric condition of the monkeys. And Manish said, wow, that's pretty cool. I'm going to do that in humans. And that's how he started the whole frontal lobotomy technique, initially with injection of alcohol, not swiping the fibers until later. So that's really remarkable. He did this um, later in his career. The third takeaway from this trip is that procedures need to stand the test of time. Even though we do things, we might uh, try things. And I credit, I have a lot of surgical mentors who were very bold and created procedures. Ultimately, they do have to stand the test of time. Even though we think we're doing cutting edge procedures or science now, in the future, people will look at what we do and just kind of laugh. The reality, and one thing I teach my residents, and I always say, if I'm doing the same procedures that I did in residency or training, we have failed. We have failed to move this field forward. I believe that is absolutely true. We need to keep innovating and keep moving things forward. And Egos Muniz was actually someone who did that. Okay, if you're interested in another video uh, about a day in the life of the neurosurgeon, check here.